actually quite fondant and any trouble that you might come across when working with fondant. So let's get to it. Okay, so to make fondant we will need um, icing sugar and this is half the amount, I've already sifted half the amount. Then um, this is glycerin. And for glycerin, as long as it's not perfumed or colored, then you can use it to make fondant. Then this is um, gelatin, vegetable fat. You can use margarine, but because margarine is yellow, um, it does give the fondant a tint. Then this is vanilla essence. Um, I like using clear vanilla essence because the dark one will obviously give uh, tint the fondant. Mm -hmm. Then, um, let me first go to this. This is uh, glucose syrup. And because I'm making a double batch, I usually use a whole jar to make a double batch. So that's why it's still in the jar. Then we have our water. The ingredients, you can find them um, in the ingredient section in the class. Then, um, this is CMC. I want to talk about this as the last thing. Um, normally I do not advocate uh, for adding CMC in fondant but it does make your fondant more elastic than when you do not add. The only downside is that um, the fondant usually hardens when it stays. Yeah, and like when you do not put CMC, your fondant as long as it's well wrapped it will stay soft for a while, even for weeks. Yeah, so, but if you want the elasticity more than keeping the fondant soft, then uh, for this double batch I've added, I'm going to add um, about a, a teaspoon of CMC. Yeah, so it's a very minimal amount. So first things first, we are going to soak our gelatin. So put a water which is cold. And we're going to sprinkle our gelatin on top. If it forms a lump somewhere, you can just take a spoon and um, stir it to break the lumps. So we're going to leave uh, this aside for about five minutes. Then we'll come back and continue with the rest of the steps. So. After about five minutes, this is how our soap gelatin looks like. So now we are going to move to the stove to melt this over bain marie, which is just basically melting using steam from boiling water. You can do this in the microwave, but be careful not to overheat gelatin because when you overheat gelatin, you tamper with its uh, properties which will end up with the, you will end up with fondant that's cracking if you overheat the gelatin. Yeah, so take care if you use the microwave. Okay, so once you have water that's boiling, make sure that when you put your bowl over the sufuria or the saucepan, that the water doesn't touch the bottom of the bowl. Yeah, so because we, we just want to use indirect heat. So we're going to let this uh, melt. You do not have to stir it. We want it to become liquid before we add the glucose syrup. And this doesn't take long at all. Just, it's usually a sticky mess, but if you want to make your work easier, you can stand the jar in in uh, hot water and now we're just going to keep stirring this until the two become one because right now you can actually see the gelatin and the glucose syrup we want it to become one mixture then we'll remove it from the heat so once the mixture has become uh, one I like removing from the heat at this point. Uh, you can add the rest of the ingredients if you want while it's still over the bain marie. But because we're not going to add this mixture when it's still this hot, 
the ice and sugar um, I like saving time so instead of me adding everything here and then having to wait for you to cool down I like adding the rest of the ingredients away from the heat so at the same time I'm giving the mixture time to cool down yeah, so we'll move back to our working area and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients there so now we're going to add uh, the vegetable fat So once melted, add your glycerin, then your vanilla essence. I'm just going to feel the temperature, it's still a bit hot. So we let it cool down further before um, we add it to the icing sugar. To the CMC into... So once it has cooled down, we will make a well at the center and pour all of this mixture in. We usually start with half the amount of icing sugar because uh, you probably not use all of the icing sugar. Uh, according to the recipe because of many factors um, one of them being the weather and the temperatures so and also the altitude of where you are so you're safer off starting with half the amount then adding the rest bit by bit until you get to the consistency that you're looking for so now that it, it's become firm i'm going to move using the scraper it's become firmer but it's still sticky so the scraper comes in really handy in scraping up the sticky bits so now that almost all of the ice and sugar is has been absorbed I'm going to add um, more now when you're adding more you do not have to use uh, I usually measure my icing sugar using this cup which is a flask cup uh, when you're adding more icing sugar you do not have to use the same cup you can use the measuring cups but the only reason I use this flask cup is that because it gives me a bigger batch so I've added two full cups because I know uh, I can feel it's still sticky so I know I, I was still I was still going to add more icing sugar so that's why I've added two cups but um, as you continue the farmer it becomes the less and less icing sugar you add so you know you just adding you just start adding a little at a time instead of full cups don't use too much force when you're kneading the fondant because then you'll be overworking it which will lead to it cracking now for big batches because this is a double batch and sometimes i end up making up to even five times the recipe if i'm doing um, a wedding cake or something so i like dividing it into two it's, uh, it's easier that way to knead. Then I sprinkle this other half with icing sugar just so that it doesn't dry out too much as I'm working on this one. Or you can cover with a lid. So we're going to move this here and now work from our surface. And I just see a little, that's probably quarter cup. Then now work on this one until it becomes um, firm. Then I'll wrap it and I'll work on the other batch. Please don't do that motion when you're kneading fondant. That's overworking fondant. Don't use a lot of force. So make sure that you've used up all the icing sugar on your working surface before adding more. 
because then it will allow you time to be able to feel if the fondant is still too sticky on the surface so that you're able to estimate how much icing sugar to add then after this after all this is absorbed we're going to move to adding corn flour the reason being uh, fondant easily absorbs icing sugar so if you keep on adding icing sugar it will just keep absorbing then when you stop and you allow it to rest your fondant will become too hard so corn flour um, will act as a drying agent yeah so also when you're using corn flour you have to be very careful not to put too much and you end up with fondant that's too hard so now we're going to move to using corn flour the fondant still feels um, sticky but it's not too sticky how I usually tell that it's ready um, it should be slightly sticky when you touch it slightly sticky when you touch it but not um, sticky on your surface if it's sticky on your surface once all the corn flour the icing sugar is absorbed and you're kneading it means that you still need to add more either more corn flour or more icing sugar So what I usually do to know that it's ready, I move to the other part of the working surface where it doesn't have bits of fondant to it because these bits of fondant will make the fondant stick. Yeah, so I need it on a different part that's clean and I need four let's say 30 seconds and just I'm just checking to see if it's going to stick on the surface and as you can see it's not sticking on my surface but when I touch it it's slightly sticky so that's how you know it's ready and then I like um, applying a little vegetable fat all over my fondant which will actually help it remain soft and also ensure that the paper sticks all over. So wrap it tightly. Double wrap and ensure that you do not have any bit that's not wrapped because then that bit will dry out so our fondant this bit is ready so you're going to let it rest um, the least time that you can allow it to rest is six hours yeah otherwise if you start using it right now it's too soft so it's just going to be stretching when we're lifting it up to drip on our cake so it needs to rest the list is six hours or you can do overnight.